If your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. The light of one soul is equal to that of sixteen suns. According to the path of the mystics and masters, the soul is an incredibly brilliant light. But that light has become covered over, has become obscured by various subtle bodies and the physical body. The soul, a spirit entity of brilliant light, incarnates, clothing itself with several subtle bodies that correspond to various inner regions, astral body, astral plane, causal body, causal plane, and of course the physical body corresponding to the material plane. Know yourselves, a cloud drifting before your sun. Cut yourself off from your senses and behold your sun of intimacy. A verse of mystic poetry about contemplative meditation by Fakir Rudin Iraqi from his Sufi spiritual classic Divine Flashes. Iraqi is describing here the process of meditation practiced in numerous mystical traditions of the East and West. In order to obtain the vision, the seeker, one, closes their eyes and stops paying attention to the outer world for a while, and two, discovers inner spiritual seeing and hearing, the inner senses of the soul, which are able to contemplate heavenly realities. The process of gaining a vision of paradise and mystic transport has been described as stripping off old garments and replacing them with a new heavenly robe perceived to be made of light. In his Persian Sufi classic Divine Flashes, Fakiruddin Iraqi describes the process saying, when the beloved would exalt the lover, he strips from him the garments collected from all the worlds and clothes him in the robe of his own attributes. Then the beloved calls him by all his own attributes. The beloved calls him by all his own names and seats him in his own place. When the lover studies his new clothes, he finds himself arrayed in different colors and will wonder, what is this beautiful tint, this garment, so unique? The quote from Divine Flashes reminds me of saying 37 in the Gospel of Thomas, one of the earliest collections of the sayings of Jesus. His disciples said, When will you appear to us? When will we see you? Yeshua replies, When you strip without being ashamed, and you will take your clothes and put them under your feet like little children, and trample them, then you will see the Son of the Living One, and you will not be afraid. Sufism is a form of Islamic Gnosticism or mysticism which really does have many affinities with earlier Gnostic mystical traditions of the Middle East. Like other movements of the past that embrace spiritual experience and mystic transport through the seven heavens, Sufis have found it useful to compare out-of-body or ascension journeys to the stripping or shedding of garments. The above quote illustrates their view that each soul on the earth plane is wearing several garments or subtle bodies. We are souls wearing subtle bodies or coverings. Our physical body is made out of the material substance of the physical universe. We are, as the late Dr. Carl Sagan put it, star stuff pondering star stuff. Our bodies are made out of atoms that once came from stars and other objects of the cosmos. When we enter into contemplation and mystic states, our awareness is elsewhere. We become dead to the world, have risen above body consciousness. In that sense, we have for the time of the uh, duration of our meditation period stripped ourselves of the garment of the body 
for the purpose of exploring other levels of our existence. The mystic traveler enters into what has been called the fourth state of consciousness. In addition to the waking state, the dream state, the unconscious state of deep sleep, the deep explorer, the mystic explorer, can also integrate into his or her experience the spiritual worlds. Mysticism teaches that there are many layers of reality, that there are other garments that will eventually be shed during journeys of ascension. These garments or subtle bodies have been given names in Hebrew, Greek, Coptic, Syriac, Arabic, Persian, Hindi, and other languages. In addition to the garment of the physical body, each soul is covered by several other garments or bodies, other sheaths that surround the soul, allowing the soul to connect to the various regions of creation. Counting the physical plane as level one, level two is called by many the astral plane, made of astral stuff, astral substance, existing at a slightly different vibration in the astral region. Level three is the causal body, made of causal or akashic substance, inhabiting the causal plane. Level four is the material body, made of mind substance and is part of the mental plane. The etheric body, level 5, allows the soul to access that region. Above these worlds of mind and matter, the soul resides in the timeless spiritual realm of truth or hak or sat. Metaphysically speaking, the soul, the naked soul, already exists in the heavenly realm. It's just that most of us don't know it. The light of one soul is equal to that of 16 suns, according to the Anurag Sagar, a scripture from India also known as the Ocean of Love. There is light within a person of light, and it illuminates the entire cosmos. Yeshua from the Gospel of Thomas, the apostle who went to India. Even as the sun shines and fills all space with light, so shines the Lord of love and fills the hearts of all created beings. A passage from the Upanishads, from my favorite translation of the major Upanishads, by Eknath Eswaran. More light on the light. This is from St. Augustine. I entered even into my inward self, thou being my guide and able as I was, for thou were become my helper. And I entered and beheld with the eye of my soul as it was above the same eye of my soul, above my mind, the light unchangeable. Not this ordinary light which all flesh may look upon, nor as it were a greater of the same kind, as though the brightness of this should be manifold brighter, and with its greatness take up all space. Not such was the light, but other, yea, far other from all these. He that knows the truth knows what that light is, and he that knows it knows eternity. This is from Yeshua from the Gospel of Faith Wisdom, Pistis Sophia. Do not cease seeking day or night until you have found all the mysteries of the kingdom of light, which will purify you and make you into pure light and lead you into the kingdom of the light. And the soul which receives the mystery of the ineffable will ascend to the height, being a great outpouring of light. If one is whole, one will be filled with light, but if one is divided, one will be filled with darkness. That's also from the Gospel of Thomas. If your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. 
that parallel from the Gospel of Thomas in the New Testament. When we concentrate at the third eye center, we withdraw our senses from the outside world. We withdraw any attention being paid to the senses. And it's as if our scattered soul withdraws and everything concentrates at a single point. And that's when the light may begin. When we are no longer divided, when our attention is no longer scattered in the world of outside, the world of the five senses, but focuses at the third eye or single eye, that is what leads to inner light. From the fount of his knowledge has my light shot forth. Upon his wonders has my eye gazed. Your Holy Spirit illuminates the dark places of the heart of your servant with light like the sun. A passage from the Psalm scroll of the Dead Sea Scrolls. His light illuminates and his radiance irradiates all the worlds and the divine beings which stand before him and shine in their radiance and in the radiance of the great light which rests upon them. A description of a heavenly vision to be found in the Mandaean Gnostic scriptures. The drop of my soul rises to merge in the ocean of pure light, leaving behind the illusory creation. When your eye, turning inward into your brain, pierces the sky within, and your spirit, leaving your body, flies upward, you will sight the heaven, which is the location of the thousand-petaled lotus. A passage from the Sarbachan of Swami Ji Maharaj. Within the temple of this human body is where our soul dwells. Guru Kabir once said, the light of one soul is equal to that of sixteen suns. George Fox, founder of the Quakers, once wrote, the light of God is within everyone. Thus, by looking within via a contemplative meditation practice, we can truly access the kingdom of God within, at the seat of the soul, according to the mystics of the East and West, located at the third eye center. In other words, if this human body is the true temple of God, then logically the third eye center, the seat of the soul, is the door or portal to this temple. According to the Sages of Wisdom, the third eye center is the place of purification from the effects of the outer senses and impressions, and is the place or field of vision for the worship of God in meditation. As we become focused in meditation, mentally repeating our sacred word or words, and gazing into the darkness, we may discover the appearance of inner light. We may see the same sparks of light that look something like fireflies or sparks which are described by yogis in the Hindu Upanishads, seeing shimmering light, stars, lights of various colors, or other visions of light. This is from one of the Upanishads. Holding the body steady with the three upper parts erect and causing the senses with the mind to enter into the heart, a wise man with the Brahma boat should cross over. All the fear bringing streams, fog, smoke, sun, fire, wind, fireflies, lightning, a crystal, a moon, these are the preliminary appearances which produce the manifestation of Brahman in yoga. When with the nature of the self as with a lamp, a practice of yoga, beholds here the nature of Brahman, unborn, steady, from every nature free, by knowing God, one is released from all fetters, it says in the Upanishads. 
The following is from a satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh on the soul's descent into the lower planes and its eventual ascension again through the path of meditation. Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras described how the soul came or incarnated into this physical body. From Sach Khan, the timeless eternal spiritual realm, the soul first came down to Par Brahm, and from Par Brahm it came to Brahm. From there it came down, it descended down to the back of the eye center, and from there it focused its attention downwards. And through those rays, it got the five pranas, the life force functions within the body, and all of the rest of the physical body, this last covering, was enlivened. So when the soul came to Brahm, it was covered by the causal body. Then when it came down further to the thousand-petaled astral lotus, the Sahasdal Kanwal, the astral body covered it. And then it got into the physical body, or the pinned, at the back of the eye center, where the physical body covered it. It is like a thousand-watt bulb. If it is giving light across, if we cover it by a bed sheet, then that light outside is reduced, and then we cover it with another bed sheet, the light is further reduced. And finally, when we cover it with a dark blanket outside, it completely becomes dark from outside. But the thousand-watt light nevertheless remains luminous inside. So, like that, when the soul came into Brahm, it was covered by the causal and its light was reduced. When further it came to Sahasdal Kanwal, its light was further reduced. And finally, when it came to Pin, the material plane, it became dark. So, when the soul goes upward again, and it leaves the body, it gets its luminescence back, and it still has two coverings. When it crosses the thousand-petaled lotus, the Sahasdal Kanwal, it goes into Brahm. Then two coverings are removed. It still has one covering. That way it becomes more luminous, and it can see itself. So when it goes into Par Brahm, it becomes very pure and it has the luminescence of twelve suns. It has a very thin covering, though, that way where the soul comes down into this third covering, the pinned, the physical body, in connection with the mind, gets impure, and it becomes dark. So Mahatmas say this to the soul, You are the soul, you are not this body. This body is like a house, you have got for a few days. And then after that, you have to go back. You have to go back to God Almighty from whence you came. Therefore, saints give us Simran and Dion, the meditation practices of Santmat. And by doing those, the attachment we have with this body is reduced. The attachment which we have with this world outside, that is reduced and then our love for Satguru within increases, and that helps us go back to God Almighty. Tulsi Sahib said, that's how our body is luminous. The soul has come to the back of the eye center, and then its rays have come down to the navel, and they have lit up the five pranas, and then all the cells of the body are lit up after that. Excerpts from a satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh. More from Baba Ram Singh, a different satsang discourse. Sant Tulsi Sahib said, Only the saints who have gone within, who have seen all this, only they have evidence of it. They can talk about it, as they have seen it themselves. By reading the scriptures or the books, we will not be able to come to know about the reality because saints go and come every day on this path. They know exactly how the body gets luminous, how they come in, how they go out. Others would not know this. 
until the eye of knowledge opens, that is, our third eye opens inside, we do not know of this reality. This reality will only be known when that knowledge is open to us, when that third eye opens. The soul is always seated at the back of the eye center, like the sun which illuminates and brightens the day. Everything is all lit up, and everything is bright when the sun is up in the sky. Like that, it is the soul which is at the back of the eye center, and the attention of that soul which is there, the rays of the soul which go into the body and illuminate the body. So Tulsi Sahib has written in his Bani, his hymn, about how the soul, the universal consciousness, such a power has come within this body and within the purview of the mind. The soul has gotten many karmas and is now a part of this body and part of the world. So this soul is under the influence of Kal and Maya, the false god or demiurge of time and illusion, and has become a jiva, a captive soul, by his becoming like any other living person. And he is going in this cycle of transmigration, this cycle of life and death. After the soul listens to the masters and follows the instructions, the soul goes up. The soul crosses Brahm and goes to Parbrahm, and then the soul comes to know all of the shortcomings that it had when it went down. So the true enlightenment of the soul is only in the Parbrahm, where all the coverings are taken off. So long as it is within the covering, it does not get the full enlightenment and full understanding. So it is important for you to do your bhajan, simran, the meditation practices, and follow the path of the masters and the instructions of the master. If we do our bhajan, simran, then the burden of karmas, the burden of karmas that we have built up, is reduced. Therefore, what the master tells us, we should listen to that. Every day we should have the habit of sitting for satsang and doing our bhajan, simran. Baba Ram Singh. And finally today, a couple of sentences from Light Brighter Than Billions of Suns and Moons from the Anurag Sagar Kabir's Ocean of Love Volume 1, one of three volumes of spiritual discourses and commentary on the Anurag Sagar by Baba Kehar Singh. Some verses on meditation practice. In the beginning we do Simran of Nam with the tongue. Slowly when we transcend to go inside, then this Simran, this repetition of names of God, goes on without the tongue. We get the hands and feet of the inner world to proceed further on the journey of inner worlds. When Kal is confronted, he surrenders and salutes and further requests to place our feet on his head to go further. In other words, in plain language, the mind is transcended. A japa jap, i.e. repetition of the nam from within without the movement of the tongue, now begins, and one hears the sound current in a very normal state, a very natural state. Thus one proceeds further on the path shown by the guru. The mind which moves with the speed of wind now becomes calm, and one transcends the mind, and further, one does not care for worldly things. The sound is heard without the movement of the tongue, for this a japa japa, one does not require rosary beads. In this way the soul catches the sound current and reaches the everlasting anami lok, the nameless plane, the eighth heaven, where there is neither death nor birth. 
Dharam Das on reaching Anami Desh. One sees Sat Purush, God the true original being, and one finds that the light of a particle of Sat Purush is greater than that of billions of suns and moons. His glamour is beyond description. Here the light of the soul becomes greater than the light of sixteen suns. From a satsang discourse by Baba Kehar Singh, on the meditation practices, the Simran, the repetition of names of God, which can be done verbally for a couple of minutes, and then you transition to repeating your sacred name or names within, with the tongue of thought, a mental chant, an a japa japa or a manas jap, a mental Simran, and eventually you hear the inner sound, which is a higher form of the name of God, a name above every other name above alphabetical names altogether, an eternal sound current. The sound of God is the true name, and eventually the soul ascends through the various planes of consciousness and becomes once again the naked soul without any garments of the worlds below. The luminous soul has the light greater than that of sixteen suns. Thanks for joining me today for this Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. A couple of random spiritual quotes closing out the program. What do you see when you turn out the light? I can't tell you, but I know it's mine. Beatles, from their tune, with a little help from my friends. In your grace and mercy, elevate my surat, my soul, so that I may hear shabd within. A prayer from Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram from Prim Bani Radhaswami, Volume 4. And this is from Father Lazarus, uh, Father Lazarus, rather, from the monastery of St. Anthony in Egypt one of the few living Christian mystics in the world today. I found this quote to be quite profound. You are here to bless the world through prayer, not by a long list of names, but by being awake in the spirit and awake in your soul. This wakefulness to the Lord, this is a blessing on the world in itself.